Hello everyone, welcome back to the platformer lessons. In lesson number five, we'll be adding a collision check to see if the player lands on top of the fly enemy. But first, let's look at the challenge from last time. Your objectives were to add a couple variables in the fly enemy start and use them in order to make the fly enemy either fly in different directions or at a different speed. First, let's add those variables. So the names of the variables are here already, but we need to put a self dot in front of them first. That's so we can use them in both the start and the loop. Next, we wanted fly right to equal true at the start. We wanted speed to equal one. In the loop, we wanted two if statements. We need to check if self.flyWrite is equal to true, we wanted to increase the fly enemy's x by speed. So we say self.x plus equals self.speed. Since speed is equal to 1, we can treat it like a number. And if the speed is equal to 1, what we're doing here is just increasing the x by 1 every time the loop runs. And now we need to do the opposite if statement. If self.flyWrite is equal to false, we want to decrease the x by self.speed. That will take care of whether we're moving right or moving left. Now inside the game loop, we wanted to delete that line of code that was moving buzz because we're no longer doing the movement inside the game loop. We're doing it inside the fly enemy loop. Finally, we needed to create two more fly enemies I've named mine Busy and Basil. But we also wanted to adjust the fly right variable and the speed variable. So let's go ahead and do that. So for Busy, I'm going to make Busy fly to the left. So I can say busy.flyWrite equals false. And for Basil, I'm going to make Basil fly at a faster speed. So when I start the game, Busy, who is over on the right side of the screen, will start flying to the left because fly right equals false. Basil, who is below the player, is going to be flying at a faster speed. So there's Busy over here, and here's Basil down here. Can you see the difference? You might have a different setup and a different speed or fly right, and that's fine. As long as you've got those figured out, you're looking good. Now let's move on to the lesson. In the previous lesson, we added a collision check to see if the player was colliding with the floor. We need to do another collision check to see if the player is colliding with an enemy. So I'm going to scroll down all the way to the bottom here, and I'm going to make sure my cursor is right up against the wall here. We want to create a new if statement. So this is going to be similar to the collision check for the floor. We're going to say get collision between self and instead of floor, it's going to be fly enemy. So when the player collides with the fly enemy, we want to destroy it, but we only want to do so if the player is above the fly enemy. But how do we tell the computer that? 
Well, if we want to see if one object is higher than the other, we want to compare their y value. So if my y value, my self dot y, is greater than what? I want to say the enemy dot y, but right now we haven't told the computer what enemy is. We might know it's the fly enemy, but the computer doesn't know that yet. We have to define that first. For instance, we might have many enemies in our screen. As example in my sketch pad here, here's our player, and these are three enemies. If I just tell the computer, well, is the enemy below the player? Well, this enemy is. This enemy is not, and neither is this one. We need to identify which enemy we're focusing on. And the easiest way to do that is to do another collision check. We want to see which enemy we're currently colliding with. So, before I write this if statement, I need to do another line. So I'm going to go to the beginning of this one and press enter a couple times and give myself space to write another line here. What I want to do is I want to say this enemy is equal to the collision between myself and the fly enemy. I'll expand this for you so you can see the whole line. What I'm doing here is I'm making a new variable, and it's equal to that collision, and it's going to get all the information about the object I'm colliding with. So now I can use this variable to compare my y position and the other object's position. Here I want to say instead of enemy, this enemy. Make sure it's spelled the same way. And if my y is bigger than this enemy's y, I'm going to destroy the enemy. We can do that with one more line inside here. It's very simple. We just say destroy. And inside these brackets, we need to tell the computer which object we want to destroy. And since we know which object we want already, we just type it in, this enemy. Let's see it in action. If I jump on top of this enemy over here, he gets destroyed. If I fall on top of this guy, he gets destroyed too. So, now that we know how to compare y values between a collision, let's go ahead and fix something in the ground. In order to demonstrate what might go wrong, I'm going to create another floor in the game start. So I'm going to call this one floor 3, and it's another floor class, and it needs the grass tile sprite just like the other ones. And I'm going to place this floor to the right and above the other floors. So it's something that the player can jump to. However, let me show you what might go wrong. If I time my jump strangely and land on the side of the block, I'm able to go inside of it. And as long as I'm touching the block, I don't fall. That's not quite right. That's not how our game should work. What we want to do is make sure that the player is on top of the ground before we land on it. Let's go inside the player loop and fix that code. We're already doing a collision check to see if we're colliding with the floor. Now we just need to modify that. At the beginning of my line 12 here, I'm going to add a couple lines to give myself room to do more code. First, I'm going to add another 
variable to keep track of which floor I'm colliding with. So I need to do another get collision between self and floor. And now that I know which floor I'm colliding with and all the information about it, I can compare the y value. So if self.y is greater than this floor.y, then I want to stop the gravity and set on ground to true. Now, look at the spacing here and notice that these are lined up with this if statement. That's not quite right. You're going to get an error if we leave it like that. What we need to do is space these out once more. So go to the, these lines and press the tab key once. And that'll automatically give you some nice spacing. Now unfortunately, this isn't going to be all we need. And I'll explain that over in Sketchpad. Since the player's y value is calculated in the center, and the floor's y value is calculated in the center, it won't be enough to place the player on top. What's going to happen is if the player is at this point, technically, the player's y value is still above the floor's y value. We need to modify that if statement a little bit to make sure that the player is above this point plus a little bit to make sure that we're looking at this point instead. So since these are numbers, we can do any kind of calculation we want to them. We can look at the player's y value and see if it's higher than this y value plus a certain amount. So if I say this floor.y plus 45, what this is doing is it's looking at wherever the floor is and adding 45 to that, and then seeing if the player's y value is above that. And like that, we should see the result. If I'm on top of the floor, I stop. If I'm not, oh no, I fall right through. And with that, we're done lesson five already. In the next lesson, we're going to look at adding a health value for the player and being able to bounce off the top of the enemies when we destroy them. I'll see you there.